As counterintuitive as it may seem, we believe that the key to winning an x pact may very well lie in proving or showing them that you don't care about them anymore. Yet the most difficult part about this upon interviewing our success stories, people who've actually gotten their exes back, is that it's not about pretending you don't care about them anymore. It's something you authentically have to feel. And so today I would like to explore how you can give off the signals that you don't care about your ex anymore so that you can actually work to get them back. Now let's start at the top. I think probably the biggest issue a lot of people have is something that I lovingly refer to as the pedestal theory. Oftentimes we're finding most of our clients are putting their exes on this imaginary pedestal. And there's a lot of reasons for why they're putting them there. And usually the best explanation we have is it's often natural for their anxious tendencies. So when we actually explore anxious attachment styles, we learn a couple of things that lend credence to our understanding of why people with anxious attachment styles tend to put their exes on this imaginary pedestal. The first thing is that anxious attachments tend to get overly attached to their partners, and they place an emphasis on romantic relationships, and they have a much harder time getting over a breakup. So common behaviors often include being clingy, being demanding, getting jealous very easily, or getting very easily upset by very small issues. Ultimately, anxious attachment styles place their exes on a pedestal thinking that this is the solution to their problems. They can get all of their emotional needs met by this person. Now, upon interviewing many of our clients with attachment styles that are anxious, we'll often hear something along these lines from them. There's no one else out there in the entire world that can understand me the way my ex understands me. And ultimately, this is the core reason for why they place their ex on a pedestal. They have to get this one person back, and if they don't, their romantic relationship life is over. Yet, what we have to try to open their eyes to is the fact that that's not accurate at all. So the question now becomes, how do you knock your ex off that pedestal? Now, I've talked a lot about this concept in the past of a magnum opus, finding something that is so valuable and important to you that you actually put that on a pedestal instead of your ex. But I would actually like to dig deeper because I think a lot of times me just simply saying like, yeah, find something, so find a new hobby that's gonna be your magnum opus isn't really gonna cut it for a lot of people. They're just gonna scoff or roll their eyes and say, okay, Chris, cool, but not actually do it. So I think really the key to understanding how you can knock someone off a pedestal and make them not your first priority, but maybe your second or third is by understanding the true meaning of life. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably think about life in very linear terms. So oftentimes when someone says, well, what's the meaning to life? You think there's one singular answer to it. But I would actually like to push back on that thought because it is a thought that I used to have a long time ago. You know, there has to be just one singular meaning for what life is. The truth is though, when we understand or look at the definition of meaning, it's not just usually one singular thing that creates meaning. I would argue that life is the intersection of three competing ideas. The idea of relationships with others, the idea of learning, and the idea of service. And all three of these ideas can kind of create the synergy to ultimately create your experience, your meaning in life. So let's start from the top, relationships with others. Well, this is exactly how it sounds. You're talking about your specific relationships with other people, not necessarily your ex, though that is included. Romantic relationships are certainly a large part of creating meaning in your life. But ultimately, relationships with others matters as well. And if you don't believe that you need to have relationships with others, I would actually argue you're dead wrong. My wife and I have recently been watching this really fascinating show on the History Channel called Alone. I know, pretty cool title. But the concept of this TV show is pretty simple. They take 10 people, 10 survivalists, and they put them in one of the most devastating to survive places in the world. And basically it's a competition where they have to survive, live on the land for as long as possible to outlast everyone else. And what we find is there's always certain people with gaps people that can really easily understand 
how to live off the land, and then there's those people who can't understand how to live off the land. But most of the people who come onto the show understand how to fish or how to hunt and how to create a shelter and how to handle a bear coming across. But ultimately, the biggest challenge people encounter on that show is the fact that they're alone. There's no one to talk to. And what we find consistently across all contestants is that by the end, every single one of them is unbelievably depressed and sad and angry. Why? Because human beings are not meant or not designed to be alone. They're designed to interact with others, find value in relationships. So if you're sitting there and thinking, okay, I am only going to focus on my relationship with my ex, you're missing out on all of the other potential relationships you could have with new romantic partners, but also new friendships. Hey there, real quick before we get you back to your video, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, well, please do that. It really does help. It helps keep our video editors paid. It helps us keep doing these high quality videos. And it's really five seconds out of your day to click one little button. So if you could, please just click the subscribe button. No harm, no foul if you're not interested, but we figured we'd try. All right, let's get you back to your video. And then we have learning. Learning's pretty simple. It's all about understanding the world finding a problem, understanding the solution to that problem. This can be found by simply picking up a book and learning about a topic of history. This could be about dedicating your career to science, trying to learn something new. This could also be about understanding human psychology, very similar to what I'm doing here. I'm trying to teach you, but also I'm learning at the same time. I've never been shy about the fact that I believe the process though we have come such a long way from 10 years ago when we started, is still a work in progress because we're still learning new things to implement. Slowly but surely, we get closer and closer to what we believe is the ultimate truth. So you can find value or find meaning in your life through understanding and learning. Oftentimes, we're finding people who have their exes on pedestals are not trying to cultivate their minds in all of these other ways. I mean, even just simply taking your ex, trying to understand the psychology of why they're avoidant towards you or trying to be self-aware and understand, you know, I am kind of anxious. How do I stop that anxious behavior? That all goes into learning. And then we have service. Now service is kind of interesting because it is really all encompassing. Service can be serving other people, which includes many things. Like for example, some people gain their entire meaning through helping others. This is things like doctors or nurses through medicine, right? They've learned about medicine and they want to serve others and help others. But also there's emotional serving. What about people who dedicate their lives to telling stories like in Hollywood to cultivate or create meaning through action and story? Well, in a way they're serving you because they're trying to help you understand something about yourself through the story, poetry, art. All of these things are definitions of serving and they can help give your life meaning. So rather than looking at these three things, because ultimately the question we're trying to answer here is how do we make our exes or how do we show our ex that we don't care about them anymore? How do we knock them off that pedestal? I think ultimately the answer lies in understanding the areas of your life that you've neglected through this relationship with your ex. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, oftentimes we're finding people who have anxious attachment styles tend to get tunnel vision when they're in relationships with their ex. They tend to neglect other friends. They tend to neglect their research studies. They tend to neglect whatever book or art piece they were working on, all in service of this one person. And while maybe initially your ex enjoyed that type of attention, it gets really old really fast and they start to think to themselves, does she or he even have a life of their own, and they again push you away. Not oftentimes because of just that thing, but it is a contributing factor. So I actually would argue if you wanna show your ex that you don't care, if you wanna find a priority, a magnum opus, start by understanding the areas of your life that create meaning that you have neglected. And I wanna say one other thing. 
Because a lot of times when you're looking at these three areas of your life, we're only looking at it from terms of, wow, we have spent so much time with our exes that we've neglected all these other things. But it's also inversely true. If you spend so much time writing this book, for example, that you're really passionate about and you neglect everything else in your life, you're not gonna have a great meaningful experience. In the end, you might have regrets about, wow, I wish I had spent more time with this person, or I wish I had learned more about psychology, or I wish I had learned more about my family tree and history and ancestry or whatever it is. So here's my point, broaden your horizons if you want to show your ex that you don't care about them anymore. Now this video was more philosophical by nature, but if you're sitting here looking for a step-by-step -step game plan on how you can get your ex back, probably the best place for you to start is on our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com. There we've put together a special two minute free quiz designed to basically tell you what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back and figure out where your starting point is and then we'll direct you from there. So if you're interested in taking that quiz, just simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click the link you see there. It'll take you to the quiz and we'll get you taken care of. Also, if you have not subscribed to the Chris Sider YouTube channel, I would really, really appreciate it if you did. I know I talked a little bit about it earlier, but just to reiterate, all it takes from you is just a one little second of clicking that subscribe button and potentially the bell notification so that you can get updated whenever we come out with new videos. I'll see you next time.